I don't think I said hi yet. Hi. Hello and welcome um, to part three of the Evanston Arts Center Co-Curatorial Fellowship Art Talk. Our theme today is spirituality and our guest um, will be Tracy Hall and also Liz Gomez. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. So, um, Thanks for having us. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Just a little bit about the um, Evanston Arts Center and the uh, an inaugural curatorial fellowship where Adara, uh, Nod, and myself are co-curators. The Evanston Arts Center uh, is an artistic hub on the North Shore for over 90 years, believes that some communities are all too rarely represented in the curatorial world. To address this situation, the Evanston Arts Center has developed a recurrent project-based position for a curator of color with ties to the Evanston community to develop an exhibition of their choosing. It is the uh, Evanston Arts Center's intent that such an exhibit will both build new ties to historical underrepresented groups, as well as introduce Evanston and the greater Chicago area to new curatorial and artistic perspectives. Adira Nod, um, co-curator, is an emerging curator who debuted at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, curating Disability and Perspective, one of four exhibitions belonging to the Commons Artist Project of Norman Tigg and Flo Wilson Black House Studios. Adira is a prosthetic, prosthetic designer and founder of AK Prosthetics Corp, an adaptive tech startup on a mission to make custom prosthetics and adaptive wearables accessible and inclusive. Adara has been featured in Forbes, Chicago Sun-Times, and America Inno for innovative work in the community of Chicago. Adara is also an ADA 25 Advancing Leadership Fellow. I'm Alfred Bhutan. Um, my curatorial practice is the Phantom Gallery Chicago Network. The Phantom Gallery are temporary exhibitions in non-traditional gallery settings. I'm also a co-author and researcher for Pop-Up Research Station and Creative Conversation, a project that is a portal where curators nationally share knowledge and resources of best practices, ongoing professional development, and is a place for moral support to enhance our collective impact while staging pop-up exhibitions. Again, welcome. Yes, thank you, Alpha. And I will be introducing our established artists who will be presenting as Tracy D. Hall. And then we will have our emerging artists as Liz Gomez. And also our pronouns for Tracy are she, her, and Liz's pronouns are they, she. So um, thank you both for being here today. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so Tracy D. Hall is an artist, curator, and librarian. In 2016, Hall founded Rootwork Gallery, dedicated to showing art that has healing and the investigation of folk and indigenous cultures at its core. A graduate of the University of Washington, University of California, and Yale University, Hall was raised in the Watts neighborhood of Los Angeles, Tracing her family back four generations to a small Louisiana town, Hall is the first generation in her maternal family to be born outside of that Southern state and the first generation on both sides of her family to be born outside the South. Hall learned the foundations of traditional black healing and alchemy from elders in her family and is committed to keeping these folk practices alive. All right, and then Last, we have Liz Gomez. Liz Gomez began drawing portraits professionally at age 17 in theme parks around the US before relocating to Chicago to attain a BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 2014. In 2018, Liz decided to combine their passion for portraiture with their work in humanitarianism to create the Divine Gratitude Portrait Movement a traveling documentary series designed to give thanks and bring visibility to individuals whose stories show the healing powers of holding space for others. The individuals selected disrupt the cycles of fear and division in their communities and pave the way for a joyous and equitable future. 
Liz Gomez has completed art residencies with the Hunter Radcliffe Artist Residency Program and the Chicago Artist Coalition Fieldwork Residency Program. In 2021, Liz Gomez was invited by the University of the Basque Country located in Bermeo, Spain, Bermeo, Spain as a traveling artist and educator. Gomez intends to research visual and communication practices in the Basque, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay, in the Basque territory. Given their interest in and work around the historical representation of lesser seen or represented cultures like black or indigenous peoples. In addition to the Honeycomb Network, Liz Gomez's work has been showcased at Rootwork Gallery, Chicago, Illinois, the Stony Islands Arts Bank, Nobel Peace Prize Forum, Minneapolis, Minnesota, ACM Shy Conference on Human Factors and Computing Systems, Montreal, Canada, Phantom Gallery, the William Hill Gallery, Chicago Cultural Center, the Museum of Science and Industry, Radcliffe Hunter International Gallery, the Plum Gallery, the Gene Siskel Film Center, and the Everson Art Center of Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> okay, yes. Thank you both so much for being here. We are so excited to have you all and for everyone to learn more about you and your work. All right, so let's start with our first question. And we're gonna have Tracy start. So how do you identify? How is your identity expressed in your work? I identify, I think primarily as, um, as a learner and um, as someone who is curious about the world, um, as someone who um, is in the continuum of a line of um, healers, um, um, some of whom um, I can directly trace back to Grand Cane, Louisiana. Um, and when I say that, I'm talking about my great grandfather, Papa, who was a fire talker, whom people um, came to, to, to him when they had been severely burned. And um, I'm told that he would um, speak to the fire that was contained in their skin and ask the fire to release their skin so that their skin could be either um, healed or even um, made smooth again. And I'm tracing that uh, back as well to his daughter, who is my grandmother, Bessie, um, as well as her mother, um, who was a traditional healer in the, in the sense of um, herbal medicine or what we would call in Louisiana root work. And I also trace it back to my own mother, who had integrated um, these types of practices into the vernacular language of a woman running a household. So that um, although I have studied um, these things, I, I learned them um, through practice. And, um, and so I, I identify primarily in, in that way as being in a continuum of, of healers and also as I identify as an artist and a curator um, and an activist librarian. Uh, and I, yeah, go ahead, Liz, yes. Thank you. Um, and I identify as an Afro-Indigenous um, creator as well as explorer. Um, I come from a long line of, in my opinion, fire women. Um, I feel like my mom was the first person in our generation to really step out and to um, state what she was gonna do with her life. And I feel like I'm a continuation of that legacy and really, really just reclaiming space for myself and for my ancestors to have, in my opinion, had dreams deferred. And so I plan to um, tap into every single one of my authentic visions and to embody each one and I hope to serve as a beacon for other people to know that like, whatever it is that you're here for, it's very unique to you. Um, and you have all the skills within you to, to, um, to tap into that. And so I just hope to, to show up authentically um, and whatever it is for that day and to um, make space for everyone who, who needs a bit more room to breathe. Um, I also, I'm a lover of uplifting the stories of others and, and giving thanks to our to, 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 to folks like us and our legacies um, in the many ways that that happens creatively through portraits. I'm a, just a happy maker, love to make things and love to give thanks. 
Thank you so much um, for, for that um, response. And I just fell in love with you and your work when I first met you over in your studio um, on Michigan. And um, just, and I really fell in love with your work and, and the feeling of your work when it was here at the Phantom Gallery in my, you know, in my loft space. It just was, you know, a very warm feeling. And every time I see your work, it just draws me in and the beauty of it. And you, for you to be able to transcend that, you know, you come from a spiritual space, Liz. And I just wanted you to know that, um, how, I, how I adore you, you and your work. Um, one of the questions that I want to ask you are, um, are the specific question I want to ask as uh, a curator and, and I want to press is what are some ways we as artists examine the state of our environment and through your visual work uh, and community um, and how you curate spaces. Yeah, I think for me, it started at a very young age. It's always incredibly insensitive and intuitive. And so there'd be certain things happening, but I feel like I was always just kind of, just really, really like attuned. And so art was one of my ways of processing the world. So that way I could function as the way I think most folks do. Um, and so music became a very early part of that, that journey. Um, and, and then when it comes to tapping into my environment, especially when I shifted my way to, San, um, to Chicago from San Antonio, um, getting more involved with a creative community as well as an activist community um, just let me know that I had the skills and had a, I had a sense of responsibility that I could do something more. Um, and then for me, energetically, I've always been able to pick up certain things. And so to, to, to feel these things and understand that there is um, suffering or momentum or energy, it, it felt very wrong to deny my part in, in being a part of making things better. And one of the skills that I have is with painting and um, gathering people together and, and, you know, and rallying. And so um, those things kind of came together, performance, art making, organizing, all kind of became tools um, just because I, I've, I've never been able to sit comfortably as those around me are hurting. Um, do you want to show us a brief presentation of your work? Sure. Also, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for saying that you love my work. I'm a big fan of yours too. I, I still remember the beautiful quilts. And so here, can you see everything perfect? Good. Yes. Um, and so this was a really, this was a turning point in my portraiture. Um, I'll show some of my earlier work, but this one has always um, stood out to me. Um, and so I'm Liz Gomez, I do portraits mixed media, performance, assemblage, a lot with secondhand materials because I feel an importance to caring for um, our sacred earth. And a, a large part of my beginnings and the beginnings of the Divine Gratitude, which is my current um, project, a portrait project, were to ask folks, particularly um, BIPOC individuals, um, so Black Indigenous people of color, usually women and healers in the community, like how would you like to be represented um, in any way, period, no cost, just, just how do you wish to be archived, to be given thanks, to be acknowledged visually? And so this was the first time that I started to ask myself that question. Um, and so, and that's kind of when things like sacred geometry performance came in as well as tapping beyond the visual world. And so this is when a lot of um, spirituality started to come in. And so there's different energies on the side, um, which kind of tapping into like being always being sensitive. I was able to just kind of project those onto the canvas because that's some of the energies that we're carrying with me. Um, it's, the title of it is As I Am, just acknowledging that like all of me, it's just, it's just one delicious cookie. Like it's my parts of it are, you know, a little burnt, you know, some parts of it are perfect as they are and you put them all together. Here I am, as I am. Um, let's go to the next one. Let me see. Oh, so Red Woman I Carry With Me Always. This 
is um, a portrait of my mother and myself. I really love the color red. And so, and I also enjoy the um, mastery that goes into paintings. I've always been intrigued by painters who both have strong technical skills as well as strong spiritual um, representation. So folks like Frida Kahlo, Salvador Dali, Luis Torres Gonzalez, who are able to capture um, something beyond this world, but also do it in a way that it's just like, Mwah! you know? Um, and so this is very much a conversation tapping into my the, the different ways that red could be bent to be love, to be rage, to be life, to, to be death. Um, and just kind of playing with a number of those things in a conversation with my mom. Cause I, like I said, her and I are, the, are two fire women in my family, um, an Aries and a Leo Virgo. And so we've always had a conversation a relationship with just like fire, but then also love. And so, and I think so much of that has to do with, with our, in, with our indig indigenous and, and African ancestry. It's always felt deeper than just what we have known. And so that was just my way of kind of capturing all of that. Um, and this was one of the series I did on black silk velvet, which really taps into the idea of giving, um, beings of color full autonomy of, of the, how they are represented. Tracy and I have talked about this before, but us by us. And so by, you know, seeking folks who have a similar energy and then giving them full autonomy of how they get to be represented, I feel that that is an, an act of power and an act of beauty and this one was particularly impactful because it was the first time that I asked somebody and they asked for a different material. So Rochelle, I was like, well, how would you like to be represented? And they were like, oh, black silk velvet. Yeah, like black silk velvet. And I was just like, okay, let me learn how to do that. And so it opened up a, a realm of just playing with different materials, which I continue to look at. So thank you, Rochelle. Um, and so, and then tapping into the spiritual, aspect of my work. Some paintings just pop out of me. Um, I'll get, I'll be going through something or I'll be working through something spiritually or in the physical realm and I'll need to paint. That's always been my processor. I've never had to explain myself or ask for permission or minimize myself. On my canvas, the only limitations is the size of the canvas and I always have more. Um, and so it's really where I, I get to be the most free. Um, and so these are just two different representations of different of different um, visions that I've put on canvas. And some of them come as moving images and some of them kind of pop out. And these, these paintings tend to, to be a bit quicker because they're very much like, paint me, paint me. And I'm like, okay. And I paint them. And then I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and so um, working through it is on the left, conversation of sexuality and body autonomy. Um, connecting to the redivine is on the right conversation of my connection to um, the healing powers of water and to the sacred divine. This is one of the first, well, this was the first of the beginnings of the Divine Gratitude Project, Joe Napoleon. Um, I always gravitate towards folks that feel like me because I think being, you know, Black, Latin, Indigenous, all these kind of things. It's easy to be like in between everything, just feeling like you're in the sidewalk crack of the world and everyone has a place where they feel nice and comfortable and you're just kind of floating around, not really looking like anybody and not really feeling like anybody. And so the portrait started off by me um, painting people who I felt like were my chosen family. Um, and so in my own personal kind of family tree. And Jonel is also, also at Latina. Um, and so she wanted to be painted in her traditional um, Dominican dress. And I love that. And we're right there on Navy Pier. And so even the juxtaposition kind of like she mentioned to me, like felt the same way of, of us and our awkward selves being placed in Chicago together, trying to make it work. Ali Redbu, portrait of Al Alexandria Redbu. 
Um, I really love this one because I, I consider it two portraits, the portrait of her grandmother who created the quilt and the portrait of Alexandria um, at home, who is hoping to have images of black people resting, just at rest, not pressing forward, not resisting, not doing anything, just peace and home safe. And I love that idea. And that is how the painting came together. Um, so this is some of my mixed media work. I am a revolutionary. This was um, created when the beautiful Tracy asked me to be part of the 50th anniversary of the creation of the Black Panther Party, the um, iconic Black Panther exhibition. Um, and it's a tribute to Fred Hampton's legacy of really, and a call to action for us, just like Fred asked back then to acknowledge our own power and our own place in pushing forward for equity um, and safety for black and brown individuals. Um, and so it's made from 100% reclaimed materials, um, either from secondhand shops, secondhand art shops like the Way Shed or from the street um, itself includes bits of a busted CTA station, caution tape, um, a milk carton to kind of symbolize um, the free breakfast program. Um, and in theory, it's kind of like the, I don't wanna give it away, but it's like a little bit like the rose from the concrete, but if you like black, add, add black excellence to it and the magic that is inherent with us, um, we have been through a lot as a people, but we still manage to show up just so damn magical and powerful um, and embodied. And so that was a bit of what this was about. And also just saying thank you and honoring all those that we have lost. And so there's roses around it as a, a symbol of gratitude and honoring. And so, um, these are some more of the, the, the spiritual pieces of me just kind of working through it. I find um, for me being particularly attuned, sometimes energy gets stuck in my body. And so I have to find ways to get it out. And, I, and art is one of, the, of one of the few ways that I have found to be successful. And so the, the last one, is very much about reclaiming body autonomy after sexual um, trauma and just trauma in, in general, the trauma that comes with being a woman of color living through life. And so reclaiming the word no as a full sentence, period. And the right being just kind of the process of putting the pieces back together. It's pretty like linear in that sense. <laughs> um, and so just playing on the theme of Clay making and fixing broken ceramics with gold and kind of the idea of putting the pieces of myself back together. Um, yeah. um, say our names. This is a tiny smidge of a very large mural. Um, all about tapping into the sacred energies. I, I consider it a visual um, spell, a, a, a ritual of protection. Um, and so there's different elements of it that, in, that invoke different entities, um, as well as the names of those that we've lost um, and various just mirror. It's a secondhand material. It's, it's painted on a, a refurbished curtain because I'm five foot two and a half. And at a certain point, very large paintings in a very windy city start to be eventful, let's just say. And so I started to play with different materials that were also large because Texas. Um, but more portable. I could port. I can transport this one in my, my arms and just like casually walk to a place instead of just like being blown outside of a CVS and having to like scream in the street for people to help me. And so it was a game changer. Um, and so this piece is very much um, an acknowledgement that we that the, our current world has a problem, and the problem is that it keeps scaling. Um, our family members, our loved ones, and um, just has a couple of elements on there to just ensure our protection. And uh, I do a lot of live painting and live drawing. 
Um, and so this one is life cycle of a lily. I had a bouquet of lilies and painted them when they were alive and through the process of them, um, you know, dying. And just, there's just something about nature. Uh, it's, I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. And it's just something um, that I continue um, to find inspiration and belonging in and safety and healing. And so I think as I journey to Spain, there's going to be a lot more landscape and nature paintings. Um, that's just kind of where my soul is calling me. It's kind of a combination of portraits and landscapes. And that is it. Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to do like questions and answers and comments, but we're going to look at uh, um, and talk with Tracy and ask Tracy the same question. Um, I guess but be, before that, uh, when Liz is talking about transporting work, um, I remember when she got on the CTA train and brought this huge painting over because she was determined to make sure that it was in and here for the opening of our uh, art walk. And um, so that's the perseverance that she goes through to make sure she's delivering her work to a space, she's committed. And um, you know, like when you don't have a truck and the cost of the truck for artists coming up, you just do what you have to do. And I love the way you handle getting your work and, and that motion, forward motion that you put into your work uh, as well. So, you know, um, you know, hats off to you. You know, because that, that's kind of like our struggle when we're showing up. Uh, people just see us show up and we're all cute and hooked up and beautiful for the night we set.